and just mass a massive polymerization of just all these these chromes are coming together. So you're fusing the skin, and essentially you're fusing the metal with skin. Kind of like a Wolverine style. I like to think of it as Wolverine. Because <laughs> Wolverine, that's what Wolverine does. Hey everyone, this is Phil from Ashton Leather, and before I started working at a leather tannery, I thought that all leather was the same. I just thought that leather was leather. So I brought in Esteban Perez. He is a biochemist, and he has a tanning background, works with me at Horween, and I really wanted to go through a lot of the details on leather tanning as a general thing, uh, but I also wanted to see how chemistry defines leather. So, Esteban, thanks for coming to hang out. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah. I know that you have that degree in biochemistry, but did you ever see yourself working at a leather tannery? Not really. I just thought myself being a lab rat in some sort of cooked up lab and just mixing <laughs> Beakers everywhere. Just beakers. Just beakers. That's that's the goal. <laughs> Parents think it's beakers. That's all it is. But no, I never thought leather. The other changes everything. Ch change me. Yeah, yeah. Sure. it's cool. Yeah. I, I mean, I I love working with you, and uh, I think you've really fit into that role really well. So, um, so let's get down to it. What is leather tanning, and in a nutshell, and why do we tan leather? In a nutshell, you don't want to. You, you don't want something that's putrefied. You want something that's consistent and will always be used and immortalize it. That's that's the key point, is grabbing something, making something from nothing to you know, something essential. Um, that essentially, that's that's what it comes down to, just a plain definition of tan. So, um, putrefication meaning it's not gonna rot and eventually turn into dirt. Correct, yes. You get, you get a, fresh, a fresh or salted side mm -hmm. and something that just came from, you know, you get a burger, you have a, a byproduct, that bright product, you know, could go to waste. But what are we doing? You're repurposing. There is one thing I think uh, I want to say other than putrefication. I mean, there's more to it than just making it does so it doesn't rot. Um, what else are we doing in that tanning process? So what what is the goal of tanning it? What you want is you want something that obviously except putrefication, but also stability and everlasting. And so thermal hydrothermal stability is essentially more blatant terms as wet heat. So you, if you put something that's not tanned, it's gonna disintegrate and it's not gonna, it's not gonna work. But once you tan something, you essentially make that everlasting. Okay, so we're making it everlasting and sort of strong and flexible as well, or a lot of factors. You know, you have uh, flexibility or you know tensile strength. A lot, of, all these different physical aspects of the leather become stronger for uh, for what you need. So and that's the main part. The, the main point that's of tanning is so you can repurpose this this new defined material as you know anything from shoes to, to you know jackets to everything it's just repurposed and you know it's not going to fail you okay so let's go right. through it's done right, done yeah, right. I guess That's you can mess it up rather easily yeah. and we'll go through some of those steps here of how we could mess that up but there are many steps to tanning let's talk about chrome tanning in specific and i know our experience is for me my experience is limited to horween but you have much uh, you have a little bit more of a broad experience but most tanneries will receive a salted uh, brined hide uh, cured into their facility and then they start tanning it. So what's the first step that they'll do after they'll receive that hide? As soon as you get it, you need to re re reanimate it because what you just did is you prevent it. As soon as you have that skin, you gotta salt it and you gotta preserve it because it's gonna start, the, the, top, the, clock, the clock is ticking. Right. So you salt it, we receive it, you have to reanimate it. So you have to start introducing water, you start doing detergents in order to clean it, remove any, any, any sort of dung, any, any, anything, essentially. And so you start putting, you can also introduce biocides. So biocides, you know, the antibacterial stuff, because you want to kill off anything that could be going against to what your goal is. And what's your goal? To, to make leather, tan it. And so right now all that is against you. So that's what the first phase is, is soaking it. The soak. first dirt soak, because it's just, you run it through water, the second soak, you start at introducing your detergents and putting your biocides and whatnot. And at Horween, our soaking process is done in these vessels that sort of look like big cement truck mixers. Sure, yeah. and, um, okay, so after, is that the complete process in the mixers? Or do we come out of there and go into, or we, I guess we have to remove the hair still. Yeah, so your mixers, that's, that's, your, that's your tool for getting everything you need to do. So you're gonna, you know, you just soak it, you get rid of that soak. Then after that, you can introduce your liming. So the liming is the second phase. You know, you want at this point, you're introducing lime, which is calcium hydroxide. So with this, you're introducing and you're increasing the pH. 
So what you're doing is on top of rehydrating, which is already kind of fills the voids inside your liver and makes it a little thicker because it's engorging with water, the lime itself will engorge you even more. And so that is gonna plump it up and what you want for your follicles to be exposed in, in the where the pelt is, so even before you get to the herring. So you do all that in order to increase your pH and get open up the fibers as much because as, as a tanner, the objective is to penetrate your, your tanning agent inside that, that, uh, that hide. Mm -hmm. And the only way you're gonna do that is by making sure you engorge and get as much surface area and remove that. So, okay, that's what, that's for, at first the liming phase, yes. So liming, okay, what comes after liming? You unhair it. So unhairing, meaning you remove, literally it's, it's, you remove the hair. And you know, what, what it is, is that, you know, keratin is the, is the actual protein inside that hair. And okay. so it's locked into the skin. And so what you need to do is you need to break the bonds from the skin to the hair. It's called the disulfide bond. Um, it's cysteine, it's an amino acid, all these all these components that are just locking in, lock and key. As soon as you have uh, sodium hydroxide, uh, sar sodium hydrosulfide, uh, you grab that and you essentially break these bonds. And when you start breaking them, you start removing your hair. I see. It's the same thing with the calcium hydroxide, it helps it, but it's not as, as strong as using hydrosulfide. Okay. You know, after that, you know, you, what the biggest aim that you want is to remove that pelt. And once you have, you remove all that hair, you have to grab that and actively, the next phase would be to flesh it. Fleshing, right. Yes. So, fleshing, you know, you still have a lot of things even before you get into inside your tanning. So well, you, let's, let, me, let me interrupt you because fleshing sounds real gross, but I guess, I don't know what else you call it. It's the wrong side. The, if you cut this, you open it up. <laughs> the inside of the other side of my hand, that skin, that's the flesh. Well, let's break that down. So we've got the hair side of the animal, and that's the side we call the grain side. Right. And then the the underside of the leather is the side we call the flesh side. Right. Yes. And then in the fleshing process, we're mechanically doing what? We're removing all of the the unnecessary fats. All the necessary, uh, you know, like if there's any residual protein there, just that you can remove physically, that's definitely what you need to do. You need to get rid of that. Again, going back, you want to have a nice, clean side that you can penetrate. I see. Yeah, my understanding of flushing is that it's a preparation stage, so we can accept more of the, the tanning agents. Yes. All the steps that get up until the point of tanning is a preparatory stage. It's a make or break of your leather because if you don't do anything. One thing that you don't do wrong will not give you a proper level. I see. Uh, let's talk about um, the next step, which would be deliming. Okay. So then, after the delime phase, you have your your side that's already limed and it's been fleshed, and so now you're going to introduce the problem is now that you needed this high pH in order to engorge it. Now you have to bring it down because you have to introduce your bait because with the bait and on top of not besides your bait, you have to remove all that lime you just threw. It. You put it. You put it in for a purpose, then you achieve that purpose. Now, you have to remove all the lime, the, all the cast, the calcium. That's where you use, you know, you use different salts. You use ammonium sulfate. So these ammonium agents are not only for buffing, but they also assist in removing your calcium. Because you want to delime. That's what's called delime. Once on top of that function, your second function is to use your bait. So now a bait is an enzyme, and an enzyme is a catalyst, and a catalyst is essentially something that is that you have two reactants and you need to make a product, you need that center point, that intermediate, to make everything go lower, it's activation energy, all that, all that, all that stuff that needs to be produced to make a product and not be consumed in the, in the same reaction. So you do that a lot from every day, from your, your body and stuff like that when you're doing that, you're breaking down enzymes, you drink alcohol, you're, you're drunk, yeah. you drink, you have alcohol dehydrogenase, it's an enzyme, it breaks down the alcohol and you become sober. That's a concept that you're breaking stuff apart. The same thing does for the bait. The bait, the objective is to remove any non-essential proteins besides collagen. Which Why is, do we want to remove those proteins? Well, the biggest, the biggest goal for a tanner is to try to fuse your tan, your tanning into collagen because collagen is the most. It's a big. If you can just macroscopically look at it, it's huge. It's just, it's like a house like compared to me, compared to what the collagen fiber is. So that's the most important thing. All the other smaller proteins aren't really essential because they're not going to bind efficiently because that's the most proportion of what makes up the side. Okay. Collagen makes up most of the side. I still I still have a hard time understanding what, what baiting is. So in a, in a nutshell, baiting is 
preparing us to accept. So your, your, your bait is to remove all the non-essentials because if you have those and you start introducing your tanning, it's going to interfere with all I see. Those. So you need to strip away from the non-essentials. So that's what your bait is doing. But again, if you try, you can throw your bait in in the lime, but it's not going to work because baiting and enzymes and all these catalysts are specific in pHs. So you mm -hmm. have to have a specific a specificity of from maybe let's say eight or nine for this enzyme to work. So it does, if it's too high or too low, it doesn't work. I see. So you need that's that's the purpose of bait to remove the non-essential proteins. So we re remove the non-essential proteins in the baiting process, and then we move on to pickling. Yes. So obviously, you, you wash your system, so you make sure after it's been delimed, you wash it because you want to get rid of all that solution you just put in and all that stuff. You can move on to the next phase. Next phase would be pickling, because in pickle state, think of it as you know the, you, your standard pickle in your pickle jar, like a, like a cucumber yeah. in a pickle. You jar. grab a cucumber, it transforms to a pickle, but because you're introducing a brine solution, which is essentially is an acid, a salt, and water. So, you your goal in the pickle is to lower the pH down in order to prepare for acceptance of your tanning, mm -hmm. of your tanning agent. In this case, you know, chrome, as we were talking about. Um, but if you don't add any more, if you just add a your your acid in there, you're gonna have acid swelling because the acid's so strong, and it'll start to just ruin the, the collagen, the, that that side of leather that you worked so hard to do, doesn't work anymore. So you need to add salt in order to add as a buffer and buffing agent, and also maintain its homeos like osmosis because it's essentially the salt kind of helps it maintain it. It's, it won't shrink, it won't overswell. You have to have that that nice concentration of salt in order to maintain that that uh, that stability as well. So again, remember we're still. The You're talking about the stability of the fibers of the inside of the yeah hobby. of the actual side. Because think of it as kind of like when you're in a pool all the time, and then you see your 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 fingers shrink up. Yeah, what is that? That's a concept of as you know the the, the osmosis that the osmosis that you're you're dealing with transfer over diffusion. I'm so, too swollen with water. Or yeah, if it's if it so with the salt, it helps stabilize that without shrinking or engorging, depending on the concentration. Mm. So. That's kind of like the one thing that you would want to keep an eye on and, and making your pickle right. So again, a lot can go bad if you don't work. Well, yeah, I've, I've heard stories of, uh, very unfortunately at Halloween, we've messed up the pickle before and you, you when do you start to make jello out of? Uh, yes, it? essentially you start acid swelling. When you do acid swelling, again, it just, it ruptures or it takes too much in and it engorges it and then just bursts and then you have soup. So yeah, I don't want leather soup. Yeah, oh, you, can't, you can't even work with that anymore. Yeah, it's just so. so okay, yeah. so pickling allows us to accept a tanning agent. Now that could be a vegetable sort of tanning uh, recipe, or in many cases, a chrome tanning. Yeah, so tanning is arbitrary. You can use any tanning you want, but these vital steps that we've been doing is to prepare it up to this point. Okay. This is this is the turning point. This is where. This is what this is what makes everything happen. Right. Right? You know, this would, so with the tanning, essentially now you have you know chrome. Which chrome, what what is chrome? You know, people you know you look at it as metal. Like oh, it's bad. You know, it's not it's not it's not bad because you know it's the thing is that it's something that we can use to fuse our site. So you grab the chrome, and you can link on. So it's called olation. And so as soon as you bind onto the ligands, so ligands are in a chemi in the chemistry aspect is. You're grabbing the collagen, the collagen, it's a big giant protein, and it has different binding sites. It has an amine group, which is nitrogen and some you know, positively charged ions there. Then you have your carboxyl groups, which are your you know, two oxygens and double bonds, and it's negatively charged. You know, and so when your chrome comes in, the chrome is gonna, is gonna try to bind to something that favors. And so since it's positively charged, it's gonna try to bind to the, to the actual you know, carboxyl group. So using this, you start forming these little nets, these little networks. You bind to this ligand, you bind to another collagen. I'm the chrome, that's collagen, I'm binding, I'm binding. See. So you start doing this, but it's sensitive because if you don't do enough, if you don't give it enough time for it to slowly penetrate into that, that leather or that side, if you will, it's not gonna it's not gonna properly uptake because if pH is important in these in these uh, in these factors, because if it's you want to drive it down, that's when you did the pickle. But as soon as you start raising it up, it starts to fixate. So now you have from olation to oxalation. So essentially, I have the, my buddies here in collagen, and you're another chrome, and then we all bind together. So we're binding and making this network, of, it's called polymerization of just chrome. And, and why so, do we want to do that? You want to do that in order to fuse the collagen, because that's the whole, that's the whole thing that we've been doing, is just trying to get that collagen ready for, the, for that metal, that chrome, 
in order to bind to it. Um, and the thing is, with Chrome, you can't. You have to be specific in, in how much pH and how much time you have to let it penetrate because if it goes too fast, it only penetrate. It only fixate or bind on the surface of your leather, and then then you're gonna have issues when you when it, later on. You're not gonna have a full piece of leather. You're gonna have partial partially cooked, if you will. So you need to have proper penetration and proper reaction rate. So it's really it's a really delicate process, and so it can't be overseen because this is this is what makes or breaks the, the kind of. Uh, Kind of reaction for sure. I'll uh, be honest, the chemistry seems a little bit over my head and uh, complicated. But what's? Could you try to simplify it down into a sentence or two of why why Chrome maybe number one and what's the what's the end result of using Chrome to bind those fibers together? Well, with Chrome, you try to you're essentially fusing metal and organic matter, like you know, like a cyborg, if you will. You're fusing yeah. two worlds together, an organic matter and inorganic, okay. because. Metals, you know, you try to light a metal on fire, it's not gonna, it's not gonna go. But if you light something like the skin, it's gonna go. So by you fusing these two, you're fortifying like a synergistic sort of like relationship there. You're, you're fusing your metals with your collagen, which is inside that leather, that skin or hide. Once it's completely tanned, now you have a piece of leather that's considered leather because you have metals and organic matter fused together. And that's, and that's what makes chrome tan leather heat resistant is the chrome For sure, yeah, the chrome, the chrome itself is really has stability. And so the key difference is, is a lot of, a lot of, um, a lot of molecules. Like that's why I brought my shirt here. Uh, <laughs> Star Wars, um, the transition, yeah, it's a little reference here, but transition metals are right here and all the other stuff that we normally have, you have basic, you know, pairing of your, of your electrons. So everything's in a pair, four at a time, total of eight. But with the transition metals, they have this weird funky thing because they have these orbitals or you know the, the place where you have your electrons additional because it's so big that it could few it can disobey that octet rule which is what the chem and the chemical aspect is what I was saying about the pairing. So by you being able to do that, it gives you much more hindrance, much more ligands or attachments possible than any. so more more strength more more reaction sites that you can bind. So yeah, and it's essentially strength because if I, strength because if I grab two. And I can bind three and four. You just have a big web. I see. And so essentially, that's essentially that's what it's it's, uh, it's more convenient to you. So simply put, tanning in a nutshell is what? What are we doing? Making it stronger. Making and not, it stronger. And not rotting. That's that's what, yeah, in a nutshell. That's that's what it you is. You wasted so many words to come up with this conclusion. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I just like to you know, as a chem chem guy, I like to like, explain as much as possible. No, I super appreciate it and. Uh, I've learned actually a ton of stuff from you today that I wasn't expecting, so props to you. And I think I want to do this again with, with you. We can talk about retanning later. Sure, sure. But I hope everybody out there got a lot of valuable information from Esteban. And again, thank you so much, Esteban, for being here. And thanks everybody for checking this out. And we'll do this again with some retanning and sort of conclude our tanning process. So right. thanks again. Take care. All right, guys. Thank you.